Welcome to our revision summary on collisions and car safety. So first thing we need to understand then is that in a collision what we find is there is a sudden change in momentum. Now when we've got a sudden change in momentum what we generate is a large force and when we're talking about a car crash then that large force is going to be acting on the passengers inside the vehicle which is what can cause the injury. To try to minimise the injuries, then car manufacturers have come up with a range of different techniques and items that are designed to make it safer for the people in the car. So what we've got on the table in front of us then are four of these safety features, how they work and what happens to the energy from the collision. So first one we've got there is our seat belt. Now what will actually happen is during a crash, then the seat belt itself is going to stretch rather than keeping the passenger held very rigidly against the seat. So because it's stretching, that means that we're not going to have that very sudden change in momentum for the person. Now, in terms of what happens to the energy from the collision, then it's going to actually be used to stretch those seat belt fibers. Our second safety feature then is something called a crumple zone. Now, this is the region that's generally found at the front of the car that's specifically designed in a collision to actually crumple in. So it's designed to collapse, basically. So what we actually find then is as that car impacts with another surface, then the crumple zone actually bends, and that means it's going to absorb some of the energy of that collision. Now, all of the collision energy is going to be used to bend the metal in the crumple zone at that point. Third feature we've got then is the airbag. And what's going to happen there is as there's an impact, it deploys this airbag, which creates an air filled cushion that's going to slow the passenger gently. Now, it's also going to have the added bonus of preventing that person coming into contact with the steering wheel or the car interior, because obviously they're very solid. And the last thing you want is for heads to make contact with solid objects. In terms of the collision energy, what we find there is it's used to slowly force that gas in the airbag out as soon as the passengers hit it. Final one that we're going to look at here is the collapsible steering column. So again, this is specially designed that in the event of a collision, it's going to bend. Now that means that it's going to absorb some of the energy of the collision rather than the resistance that goes into bending the steering column itself. We do need to understand a little bit more about our seat belts. Now, as we've already said, during a collision, those seat belts are going to actually stretch. So the fibers that make them up will become stretched. So that means that if you've had a collision, then you must replace the seat belts. Because what we find is after they've been stretched, then they don't go back to their original shape. So that means if you didn't replace your seat belt after a collision and ended up in another collision later on, the seatbelt wouldn't be able to work properly because those fibers have already been stretched and therefore it loses its efficiency. Now, the way that they actually work, we've said that they're going to stretch in the collision. And the whole purpose of that is to keep the person moving for that tiny bit time longer than you would do if they were held rigidly against the seat. As soon as we increase the time the change in momentum takes place over, we will reduce the force that that person then feels, and that can save their life. Obviously, we do have features that are designed to protect people in the event of a collision, but even better than that is avoiding collisions in the first place. So cars actually have a number of safety features which are designed to try to prevent accidents from occurring in that first instance. So in the table here, what we've got are four of these different features. So the first one there is what's called ABS brakes or anti-lock braking systems. Now, what's going to happen here is if you slam your brakes on on a car that doesn't have ABS, then what you can find is that the wheels can lock and then you end up in a skid. So you've got no control over your vehicle then. What ABS brakes actually do is it prevents those wheels from locking when you put your sort of foot right down on that brake pedal and therefore it avoids the skid. So this means that you're going to have great control of your car. Second one on there is what's called traction control. 
Now, what this one's actually going to do is compensate for any differences between the grip of your four wheels on the car, okay? So what you'll find is when you're driving along, if it's wet or icy, one of your wheels might hit that different surface. Now, if only one of those wheels was hitting that surface and we didn't have this traction control, again, that car could end up going out of control. So it could end up going into a slight slip or a skid, and in that eventuality, we could end up with a collision. What traction control does then is it just readjusts the balance of the actual wheels, and in that eventuality that we've hit something, it maintains the control of the car on the road. Third feature is electric windows. I know you may not think that electric windows would be able to prevent accidents, but it's all to do with distractions. So if you imagine the old window handles where you've got to wind it all the way down and then wind it all the way back up, then for that entire duration, your hand is off the steering wheel and you're not 100% focused on what you're doing. It's far easier just to push a button and the window goes down or push a button and the window comes up. So we're minimizing the amount of time that the driver's hands are off the wheel and we're maintaining their focus on the driving rather than fiddling with other things. Last one on there are paddle controls and these you'll find on quite a few of the newer cars. Just little bits on the steering wheel that allow you to control the radio and things like this. So again, anything that you've got on your steering wheel that means you can just flick your thumb or push a little finger button, then your hands don't need to come off the actual steering wheel itself. Plus, if you're able just to flick bits, you don't have to look down at your dashboard to find the controls in order to poke it. So both of those are going to maintain the driver's focus and also keep their hands on the steering wheel. A little bit more detail about how our ABS brakes work then. So what they actually do is, as you're driving along and you've slammed your brakes on really suddenly, then they actually sense when those wheels are about to lock. And at that exact point, what they do is they're going to reduce the pressure on the brake pads for a mere fraction of a second. So that prevents the car going into a skid and then it will reapply the pressure. So it's kind of like a little pumping on and off that's going on here. And the whole purpose behind that is to prevent the wheel locking and the car skidding. Now, obviously, if it's pumping on and off, then it's going to increase the time it takes to stop. But your stopping will be in a more controlled fashion. So it's kind of a trade-off there in some respects, but it does end up being safer. Last thing we need to consider then are the benefits versus the risks. So what happens is there's lots of testing that goes on with all these different car safety features. And the whole idea behind it is to find something that has a greater benefit than risk. Now, none of them are perfect, but if they can help to prevent some people dying or some people becoming seriously injured, then it's worth it. So in terms of our benefits, then we've got three of them here. First one is that if we increase the time taken for the vehicles to stop or the time taken for the collision to happen, we can reduce the forces acting on those people inside the vehicle. Lower the forces are, the less risk there is of injury. Our second one is that it's going to increase the stopping distance of our vehicles. And again, that's going to minimize the risk to the people in those cars. And finally, it will decrease the acceleration of the vehicles as well. So all of those three factors there are all designed to protect the people from serious injury or death. In terms of the risks, though, there can be some downsides to these particular safety features. So the one that we're going to actually look at for our exam then is thinking about our seat belts. Yes, they might save your life, but at the same time, they can also lead to damage of internal organs and potentially fracture of vertebrae. So there are risks associated, but it comes down to that simple fact of weighing up the benefits versus the risks. And because the benefits outweigh the risks, then they are now law, okay? So it's obviously law to wear your seatbelt in the United Kingdom these days because the benefits are far greater than the potential risks.